Give everyone, a, give everyone a few minutes to pop in here to our webinar. And I realize I have the Office of Student Engagement there. We're, I have been using this as well for, um, for Lehigh students too, so. Hey, that's okay. <laughs> All right. So as we're letting a few people uh, still join us, I will go ahead and just do some introductions and get us started. So welcome everyone. My name is Casey Dodderer, and I am the Director of Leadership Advancement for the Phi Sigma Pi National Staff. So welcome to our webinar that we're bringing here. I'm you here today, another part of our the online classroom series. And we are thrilled to be able to have uh, Nick Christie here with us to lead this webinar. He is a Delta Chi uh, faculty advisor, an alumni member, formal national staff member. And he is going to take us through this remote control webinar today. And then we also have on the call Adele one of our chapter consultants, and she will be here to answer any questions you may have that pertains to chapter operations in this remote setting as well, once Nick finishes up the slides. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Nick. All righty, thank you so much, Casey. It's uh, really a privilege to be able to be with you all here today. Um, I'm having flashbacks from my uh, reaching consultant days, and um, that was back in, 2011 to 2013 so it's it's been a little while but it's good to kind of dust off these you know these uh, muscles and um, get back into doing some some presentations for y'all um, so today we're going to talk about um, staying productive and engaged while working from home um, for most of the country now y'all are working remotely um, whether that's from um, your home from an off-campus apartment um, or you know somewhere that's not on campus um, so really um, it's important that you know you're still able to stay productive, stay engaged um, while you're you know trying to get through the rest of the semester. Today um, we're going to talk through a couple of things. First of all, you know just setting up your home office, um, some some ideas um, as you start to set that up, um, or things to adjust if you've already set up your home office and are looking to make it a little bit more productive. We're going to talk through some self care tips. Um, as we all know, self care is super important. Um, and it's something that, um, you know, even when you're away from campus, you know, it's still important to be aware of. Um, oh, it's on presenter review. Yes, let me check that out real quick. <laughs> Let's see here. Give me one second. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that, y'all. Um, so yeah, so we're going to talk about self-care um, and the importance of have, you know, having those types of things in place while you're at home. I'm going to get into some productivity tips um, and tricks that um, I found to be really helpful, um, especially as I'm also working from home. Um, and some technology, some apps um, for your phone, um, for your device that can assist you in being productive. And also, you know, we're going to talk about being present and acknowledging the current situation that we're in. Um, so let's start off with setting up your home office. All right, so setting up your home office. Okay, so first thing to consider um, is, you know, what your space is going to be looking like and where you're actually going to have your space. Um, so, you know, if you can, and again, this is all contingent upon whether you have these resources available. Um, if you do, wonderful. If you not, if you don't, um, you know, that's totally okay, too. There's different ways to adapt and kind of make changes to um, create the space that's going to be right for you to be the most productive. Um, so first of all, you know, a private space um, is really, really good. Um, so if you can have a separate room, um, you know, whether that's, you know, a bedroom, a, you know, an office, an empty, you know, space in your, in your home or apartment, um, I would suggest that it's not, you know, the same place that your um, bed is in. Um, just because you can, you know, it's good to have those two barriers. Um, so, you know, you're separating um, sleep from work. If not, it does end up feeling like you're going to be, you know, working nonstop. Um, give yourself room. This is really important. Um, so, you know, have the ability to spread out. Um, you know, if you have a, a dining room table or have a couple, you know, large desks, um, you know, that's a great area to kind of, you know, spread out all your things, your materials, um, your laptop. Um, that way you don't feel 
so cramped and also it will help with clutter too um, so you won't have to worry about having everything piled up good lighting is really important um, so you know whether that's you know electricity you know having you know a desk lamp or overhead lighting that's really good um, and if you can have natural light so you know having a, a space near a window um, is also really great natural light is really good provides um, a good source of um, energy for you um, and can definitely make you more productive um, I have a window right by me right now I'm looking at it and it's it's nice to be able to see what's going on with the world around you, um, especially during the day. Um, another thing is to check your Zoom angles or check your Skype angles, um, whatever system that you're using. Um, you know, as we transition to a lot of um, video conferencing, you want to make sure you know what's in your rear view. Um, you know, for me, I have some, um, you know, some things from my childhood. I'm, I'm currently, you know, quarantining with my family. Um, but it's important to you know be aware if there's nothing inappropriate or if there's going to be distractions in your um, in your zoom um, angles. Um, I also like to you know if you can add something that um, you know says a little bit about your character too. Um, for this you know behind me you see that there's cars. I often get asked oh what's that about? It can also be a cool icebreaker um, for for group meetings that um, you're looking to kind of connect with people a little bit more. Um, another thing, make it your own, um, you know, make sure that you feel comfortable because if you don't feel comfortable, you're not going to be productive. Um, so definitely make sure that you add your own, um, your own personality to it. Um, mementos, things that, you know, make the space feel comfortable. I currently have, and you'll see in my next slide, um, I have a tablecloth um, with a gray color. I'm very into gray colors. Um, so it just kind of makes it feel a little bit more homey to me. Um, incorporate things that inspire you. Um, I have, you know, some things with quotes. Um, you can't see them, they're in front of me, but I always like that to kind of keep me going, keep me energized um, as I go through the day. Um, good access to Wi-Fi is also really important um, and technology. Um, if you, your router is, um, be close to wherever your router is. Um, that will also help you when you're doing video conferencing and working on group projects and, and things. Um, and also technology, you know, be close to printer um, and other things like that. Have a good, comfortable, supportive chair, um, if you can, again. Um, you know, I've heard a lot of people using like dining room chairs, um, and those are great for probably about two hours and then they start to get really uncomfortable. So if you can, try to find something that's supportive, that won't hurt your back, um, that you can sit in for a long period of time. Um, and also keep it clean. Um, you know, you may be somebody that, you know, lives with a lot of clutter, um, but honestly, it is stress relieving to, you know, make sure that your desk in your area is clean. Um, and especially during these stressful times, if that's something that you can control and, you know, reduce your stress, I definitely say go for it. Um, so things that I have on my desk, so this is a picture of, of where I'm working from, uh, my makeshift uh, home office here. Um, and so some of the things that I usually have is I have a notepad that's close by. Um, and pens and pencils within reach so I can jot down notes, especially when I'm on calls like this or if I'm meeting with students, um, just so it makes it easy to you know, jot things down. Um, I have a water bottle um, that I usually fill up or a coffee mug depending on the time of day, making sure that you know, you're hydrating, um, that, you're, you know, staying, um, that you're, you're staying hydrated. Um, I also have a wireless mouse. I feel like this provides a lot of flexibility for my screen. Um, if you have that, definitely utilize that. Because um, sometimes things can be a little bit tricky, especially when you're working with like different um, Excel spreadsheets. Um, good earbuds are really important, um, especially if you're doing conference calls. I currently don't have them in right now because um, I've told my family to be quiet. <laughs> but um, sometimes you have, um, you know, different interactions, different things going on in the background, and it can really eliminate the noise. Um, plus, it allows you to hear better um, and allows you to be heard as well. So um, I, I have my AirPods that I, I put in sometimes. I also have a Bluetooth speaker um, that I like to um, put on and just kind of listen to music, just kind of get away from it all a little bit. It's a form of self-care for me. So, you know, if you have that, definitely that's a good thing. Device charging station, make sure that, you know, all your devices can charge up. I also have a cabinet with um, some office supplies that's in close reach so I don't have to go all over the place to grab stuff. Um, so things like paper, folders, notepads, things like that. And again, those inspiring mementos, I think they're great. I love them. And I think that that's something that um, you should incorporate into your space. All right. So talking about self-care, um, this is a hot topic um, and something that, you know, I encourage you all to 
really think about in um, whatever space that you're, you're coming into. Um, so one of the important things is setting boundaries. Um, and so we're gonna talk first about interpersonal boundaries. So um, as many of you are, myself included, you know, you're in a space with family, roommates, friends, significant others. Um, you know, it's important to set those boundaries and expectations up front. Um, so you all know when you're gonna be available and especially when you're not gonna be available. Um, so, you know, having those conversations is really important. Um, and some things to kind of even piggyback on that, um, which I've found to be helpful, um, are the following. So first of all, you know, creating some sort of do not disturb sign. Um, if you don't have access to paper and pencils or pens, um, you can, you know, use things that are around your house, like scarves, belts, ties, you know, basically if that's on the door, you're busy. You're, you know, not able to, um, to um, participate in, in anything that they're doing. Um, also sharing or posting a calendar or schedule. Um, so I, through my work calendar, it's Google Calendar. Um, and so I've shared that out with my family. Um, but if, you know, your family doesn't have access to Google Calendar, um, potentially it's, you know, printing it out and posting it in a, a public space or putting it on your door. So if they even, if they come to try to interrupt you, they know that you're going to be busy. Um, close the door or put up a barrier. I know some of you all probably don't have the opportunity to close a door, um, but if you can, you know, put up a barrier of some sort, you know, maybe a sheet, maybe a tapestry, um, something to signify that there is, you know, something going on that you're, you know, unreachable at the moment. Uh, setting phone on do not disturb or airplane mode. Um, this is really important too, you know, especially if you're in calls, if you're in meetings in classes, it's easy to get distracted. Um, especially when you can, you know, just have your video go black um, and, you know, nobody knows what you're doing with it. So it's important to, you know, make sure that you eliminate those distractions by putting your, your phone on do not disturb or airplane mode. Um, also with this, um, mute group texts. So, you know, if you're in any group chats or group me, um, put them on mute and then deal with them after um, you're done with the task that you need to accomplish. Um, for the most part, you know, most things, unless they're a true emergency, they usually can wait about 25, 30 minutes. And we're gonna actually talk about that a little bit further into our presentation. Um, another thing I found to really be successful is texting before and after something. So if I'm in a meeting, a lot of times I'll text my family in a group chat saying, listen, I'm going into a meeting, um, please, you know, don't interrupt me. And then when I'm done, I'm like, I'm done, you know, come on in. Um, and that also eliminates a lot of stress um, and we set those expectations up um, up early. Um, also creating a Google Doc too so you can you know put your availability but also when you're not available so you can kind of see your family's schedule as a whole. Um, and like I mentioned unless it's a true emergency you know you can usually wait. So we talked about interpersonal boundaries. Let's also talk through personal boundaries um, because it's also important for us to have boundaries with ourselves. Um, so first of all, you know, set limits on what you will start, when you will and will start and end work. Um, working from home, a lot of times it feels like you're never leaving the office or never leaving a classroom. Um, so it's important to set those limits so you don't feel like um, so for me, normally by five o'clock, I am done with the day. Um, and then whatever comes after five o'clock, I answer the next day. Um, and, you know, with work, with, you know, schoolwork, I know that's a little bit different in some cases, but, you know, set those limits for yourself so you, you know, can have some personal time that's not attached to the work that you're doing. Um, along with this, you know, set limits for time on screens. You know, we're, you know, on Zoom calls and Skype calls throughout the day. Zoom fatigue is real. Um, when you get the chance, you know, if you're on a call or on a, in a class, after that class, take a couple minutes, maybe go for a walk, do something that's, you know, that's not on a screen, and don't go from one screen to another screen. Um, so don't go on a Zoom call and then go right to your phone, you know, actually unplug for a little bit. Um, it'll be great for your eyes, but it'll also be good just to kind of clear your head a little bit. Um, and it'll probably energize you a little bit as well. Um, again, know your limits, know, um, you know, when you're going to start and know when enough is enough and don't be afraid to say that and advocate for yourself. Um, you know, it's, people will try to continue to do stuff and, and continue to work with you because that's their expectation for themselves. Um, but that may not be your expectation for yourself. So make sure that you're, you know, making that clear to them. Um, and normally that's usually fine. Just got to like put those expectations up front. 
Um, also, don't schedule meetings after a certain time. Um, you know, if you know, you know that your personal time is after seven o'clock, don't schedule meetings after seven o'clock. Another thing with this, don't schedule meetings back to back if you can. Um, this will um, reduce that burnout, reduce that Zoom fatigue, um, and it'll give you some time to decompress. Um, I like to say I try to do that, but you know, some days are, are not like this. For example, today I'm going from 9 a.m. till now on Zoom meetings. Um, so sometimes that happens, sometimes it doesn't work out, and that's okay too. Um, important to remember too, productivity is not gonna be at a normal level right now. Um, and that's normal and that's okay. If you're not feeling as productive as you normally do, that is completely normal. Um, you know, given what's going on in this situation, there's a lot of different stress, a lot of different anxiety, a lot of things that are weighing on us in our minds, um, and we're not going to be producing like we normally do. And it's okay to accept that, and it's okay um, to advocate for that too. Um, also, you're not a robot. You know, we need breaks. We need to be able to take time for ourselves to re-energize, um, to get back to center. You know, make sure that you're aware of that as well. Speaking of breaks, um, breaks are really important. Um, they do a lot of different things for our brain. They clear our mind. They boost productivity. Um, they allow you to de-stress. I'm sorry, that's a typo. Um, they allow you to de-stress. Um, they boost brain function um, and they boost creativity. Um, so even if it's, you know, a five minute walk away from your workstation, you know, going to grab, you know, drink of water, come back, that actually will do a lot for you. Um, you know, getting work done for the sake of getting work done is not as good as taking a break and then being more creative with the work that you could do. Um, so definitely make sure that you're, you know, taking enough breaks. Again, you're not a robot. You need a break. You need to take time for yourself. That is human. Um, so make sure that you know you're you're taking breaks. Some examples: going for a walk, walk watching a show or a movie, doing some exercise, meditation, um, or one of my personal favorites: taking a nap if you can. Um, and that's you know great. You know, power nap in the afternoon can really re-energize you. Another thing too is keeping a routine. Um, you know, when we're on campus, a lot of times we have a routine for every day of the week. We know when we're getting up, you know, what we're doing throughout the day. Um, and sometimes that goes by the wayside when we're working from home or working remote or even in the summertime or breaks. Um, but it's important for um, our, our self-esteem and our, it's important for our energy to keep it going. Um, keeping routine support because it does reduce stress because you know what's coming. Um, you know, you know what to plan for. You can mentally prepare for it. Um, and it allows you to, um, to be present with what you're doing rather than thinking about the next thing that's coming. Um, it improves efficiency because you're not making those decisions there. Um, it, also, um, it also reduces decision fatigue. Um, you know, during the course of any given day, we're making hundreds of decisions. Um, by keeping a routine, you're actually reducing the number of decisions that you're making, which frees up your brain space for other things that you could be doing. Uh, but also the builds momentum and confidence, um, and you're able to kind of keep it going. Some tips for that, try to get up at the same time, get to bed at a reasonable hour, um, you know, making sure you're trying to get that, those eight hours in. Um, you know, again, building time for breaks and self-care and improvement. Um, you know, like I said, you're not a robot. You can, you know, take time for yourself and build that time into your routine. Um, you know, I have a colleague that actually, you know, takes time every afternoon to exercise. It's on his calendar um, and he sticks to it. So that's a great thing to do. Um, also, build in time to get work, work done, not just for meetings and classes. Um, you know, if you're working on a project, give yourself time within your schedule, within your routine to actually get that work done. Um, sometimes we tend to, you know, get, be very meeting heavy and schedule meeting after meeting after meeting, but with little time to actually be productive. Don't be afraid to actually block out time to be productive, to work on things. Um, work around your own personal preferences. Um, you know, for me, I am an early morning person. Um, I don't mind getting to the office at 7 a.m., um, but you can't catch me, you know, there later at night. Um, so, you know, definitely work within your own personal preferences. Planning out meals can also be really helpful. Um, if you're somebody that is the meal prep, um, this again, you know, keeps the routine and you know what's expected. Um, and every day does not have to look the same. So your Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays may look one way, Tuesdays, Thursdays, or you know, whatever that works for you. But um, you know, every day doesn't have to be the same, but you should have some sort of routine for each day. 
So some productivity tips. Um, first of all, lists. Lists are a great way. They're tried and true, um, but they're, you know, there's a reason why, you know, lists still are around and still used. Um, they're a great way to keep you organized. Um, they provide a sense of structure and you get to know really what your tasks are, what they, you know, what you're going to be working on throughout the day. Um, it helps you see your whole day, see what you need to accomplish and prioritize what you need to accomplish. Um, plus, I love it when you can cross off items. It is super satisfying. Um, it also builds confidence because you can go back and see everything that you've accomplished. Um, so you can say, oh, I actually did have a really productive day. Um, and in that, that vein, it's also really stress relieving um, because you can you know, know that you've accomplished something. And it also allows you to organize everything that you need to accomplish um, with that. Dressing the part. Um, so this is also really important. Um, getting up, getting dressed. My suggestion is, you know, especially working from home, we're not saying you have to be in business casual, but I would definitely suggest wearing something different than what you wore today. Um, it puts you in a different mindset. Um, it puts you in a more productive mindset. Um, it builds confidence because you know what, when you look great, you feel great. Um, you also, it also gives you a mental boundary um, to say, hey, when I put on, you know, regular clothes, I'm going to be productive. I'm going to be working. Um, and yeah, it really can be super helpful, especially when you're working from home. All right, so this is a technique, the Pomodoro technique, um, and it's something that I found to be really helpful for me. Um, and so I've, I've really encouraged my students to, um, to work with um, this technique. So um, the Pomodoro technique is a method of time management where it breaks up your tasks into different segments. Um, so basically it looks at things as, as different segments of 25 minutes. So what you do is you start with something that you want to get accomplished. Um, say something on your list. Um, and then you set a timer, whatever timer that is, whether it's a, you know, a phone timer, kitchen timer, whatever you have at your disposal. Um, and you work on that uninterrupted for 25 minutes. No interruptions, no responding to texts, no responding to calls, no responding to email. Um, it allows you to focus completely on that task for 25 minutes. When that 25 minutes is up, is up, the alarm goes off, you get a five minute break to focus on the things that you missed out on during that 25 minutes. So you can you know, answer calls, text back, whatever it is within those five minutes, and then you repeat that for four cycles and then you take a longer break. Um, the theory behind it is that you know, if you're able to really be productive in those 25 minutes, um, that you're gonna be able to accomplish more by the end of the day. Um, and for me, I know that's definitely been successful um, like I mentioned before, too, you know, unless it's a true emergency, most things can wait 25 minutes until you're done doing what you need to get done. Um, so, you know, for so texts, phone calls, 25 minutes is not an unreasonable time to, to get back to somebody in most cases. Um, plus, it also sets good boundaries for personal communication, um, knowing that you may not necessarily always text back right away, um, but, you know, you'll get back to it within 25, 30 minutes um, of you know getting that communication so definitely a good technique especially if you're struggling to stay focused um it you know slices it up into a you know a, a nice segment that is easy to commit to schedules and calendars are also great um, i suggest google calendar but there's also a lot of different ones out there um, that you know based on your preferences you might want to use um, it's a it's helpful to um, keep you on track also, if you have shared calendars, you can see what everybody else, um, your friends, colleagues, um, you know, peers, whatever, um, if you're in groups, um, you can see what they're up to and kind of schedule time based on that. It also allows you to schedule in time for yourself, like I mentioned. Some calendar tips, try to plan out two weeks in advance if you can. Um, again, that reduces your stress and you're able to kind of see the world ahead of you um, and you can see, um, you know, what's coming down the pike. Um, if you work in a group setting or home, make your calendar public so everybody can see it. Um, so nobody, you know, it's crystal clear what you're working on when you're busy, when you're not busy. Um, if you don't want to put the actual um, uh, the events, there's a way, especially within Google Calendar, to just make it anonymous so just it just says busy versus the actual event that you're attending. But they can still see that you're um, that you're um, unable to be um, available. Link special documents to your calendar invites. This is something that I think is really helpful. Um, I know Zoom automatically will go into them, but you know, if you have agendas, documents that you're working on, you know, just put them right into the calendar invite 
that way, you know, when you do work with somebody and it's a you know shared calendar invite, you all have access to the documents right away. Um, also hold yourself accountable and use it as a boundary maker. Um, really important um, that you stick to it. Um, just think of it as your, you know, the, the, the thing that's the, think of it as your personal assistant, really saying, okay, you've got to get to this meeting. You got to get to this meeting. You're done for the day. You get to go home. So schedules and calendars are really important. Google Docs, um, I know a lot of us use these. Again, really helpful um, and really great, you know, productive way to keep going. Um, you can use shared documents to you know, work collaboratively. Um, you can assign comments um, or tasks to people. Um, you could also create logs too. So if you're working with a group, um, you know, working on a group project, you know, having them log what they've been working on um, can hold people accountable, um, which I think can be really helpful as well. And you know you can create shared drives um, so you can share resources um, as well as um, share um, share different documents that you're going to be working on collaboratively. Staying connected, you know, it's also really good to stay connected during these times. You know, we're you know maybe home, um, but it's important to you know still see people or interact with people um, remotely. That boosts our confidence, and it also um, allows us to um, to engage. So some ways to do that: Zoom, Skype, FaceTime are the obvious ones for doing the the visual um, virtual um, meetings and um, conversations. You could also do some online gaming. Um, I know um, I advise our Smash Club, and they're still doing tournaments online. Um, Words with friends is another one I keep seeing a lot of again. So there's lots of chances for online gaming. Discord, um, which is uh, an, an online platform that allows you to share things and stay connected. Um, it's really useful as well. Again, phone calls, you know, the old stuff sometimes is the best stuff. So, you know, just having a phone call with somebody, interacting with them, um, and then using social media is always good um, as well. Some ideas for staying connected, you know, hosting game night, um, virtual game nights, so doing trivia via Kahoot, or doing Jackbox, or um, you know, doing movie watch parties, Netflix party I know is really popular, um, or having virtual get-togethers, you know, having a virtual coffee hour, or um, you know, something to that effect. All right, just so, some tech, some applications to assist. Um, obviously, the Google apps are really helpful, uh, as I've mentioned um, throughout the course of this presentation. Zoom, Skype, FaceTime are essential, um, especially as you're you know, going to classes. Um, some other things that I found to be really helpful, Evernote. Evernote's great for um, collaboratively taking notes um, and jotting down things for the future. Slack is a great way to um, communicate with colleagues or group mates um, or classmates. Um, it allows you to kind of share documents and um, kind of have a, um, a place to communicate, um, you know, what's going on within your, you know, small group um, or meeting or, um, or class. Um, Focus Booster is based around the Pomodoro method. Um, it has timers in there and it actually allows you to link them to tasks. Lyft, not to be confused with the transportation app, um, but Lyft is a goal setting app um, that works with you and sends reminders and follow ups for goals that you put into it. Um, Dropbox is a great way to share documents and collaboratively work together. And Wonderlist, which is also another list taking document. Um, that you can utilize. So finally, um, we're going to get to this piece with being present and acknowledging the situation. Um, you know, this time is something new to all of us. Um, and it's important to, you know, be, you know, okay with not being okay sometimes. Um, every day is going to be different. Some days you're going to feel really productive, really energized. And sometimes you're not going to feel energized and productive. And that's totally okay, given the circumstances. We're all dealing with this time period in our own way. We have different stresses, different things that are going on in our world. Um, you know, personally, I, my mom and my sister are both nurses, um, so they're out there in the hospitals every day. So, you know, that anxiety, that stress, um, you know, worrying about them also plays into how I show up to work. Um, so it's important to remember that, you know, we're all showing up in these spaces in different mindsets. Um, and that's okay. Um, give yourself time to process how you're feeling. Um, so, you know, give yourself time to really think about the things that you're, you're dealing with, um, even the things that you're losing, too. 
Um, there's a sense of, you know, there's a, a process of grief going on too for the things that, the opportunities, the events, the things that you're not going to be able to do um, because of this new reality that we're in for the moment. Um, be easy on yourself and others. Um, if you, you know, don't do, if you don't do things perfectly, that's okay. If you, you know, normally, you know, go for a five mile run and you could only do one mile, that's okay. Be easy on yourself during this time period. Also be easy on others too. Um, it's important to, you know, be there for one another, but it's also important to, to realize that we're all going through this thing in different ways. Um, anxiety and stress is high, so please take care of yourself. Um, like I said, we're doing this together. We're learning together, growing together. Uh, most importantly, you're not alone. Um, you know, there's always resources to help. Um, you know, with Five Second High, great support system here. Um, but also, you know, with your universities, I'm sure, you know, lots of people at your university are, are there to help out. Um, and you're enough. No matter what you do, no matter, you know, how much you get done or don't get done, just showing up, that's enough. You are enough, and we, were get, we will get through this together. Um, so with that, that is the end of my presentation. Um, so yeah, thank you all for allowing me to take some of your time this afternoon. And um, if you have any questions, you know, please let me know. Yes, thank you so much, Nick. That was incredible. Um, I'm gonna start doing that 25 minute trick because I think at least to try it, like you said, you know, you never know if it's, it's will work for you, but it definitely sounds like something I should, almost all of us should try. Uh, it sounds like a really great tactic because I know I am one who gets, I'm not the best multitasker, but I do multitask because an email comes in and then I start working on that project, so on. So I think it's that's- It's so easy to get off, especially with, you know, texts and, you know, different notifications. It's easy to kind of get distracted, so. Exactly. Yeah. So before we wrap up, does anybody have any questions that they would like answered, either uh, answered by Nick or for Adele to answer for a- um, chapter standpoint. I'm glad everyone could join us this afternoon. I know it's, as we said, it's kind of a lot. We're doing a lot of Zooming and a lot of Google Hangouting, but it's nice to be able to connect with everyone, even if it is just Absolutely. for a few minutes. All right, doesn't look like we have any questions coming in, which maybe that just means, Nick, you covered everything. <laughs> I think that's kind of where we're at. I think you covered just about everything that we all need to hear right now. This is definitely uplifting, and I feel like, you know, kind of gives you a, a great, like, stance of, like, I got this. You know, we're we're all kind of in the same boat, but we got this. And, we do, you know. and we're, we're learning as we grow. I mean, um, or learning as we go and grow, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I mean, it's this is was really a, unexpected by a lot of us, um, and I know especially I, I talked to a lot of my um, my teacher friends, and a lot of times, I mean, they were just basically told to take what they had in their classroom, and you know, they're teaching online the next week. So like, you know, we're building this as we fly, um, and there's going to be bumps along the way, but we'll work through them. And you know, I think as long as everybody's intentions are good, at the end of the day, we're going to be just fine. Definitely. And we did get a question for you, Adele. Um, we want to know what does your workspace look like and what is helpful for you while you're working at home? Since you actually work from home all the time, this is really nothing super new to you, but what are some tips you have for us? So some tips that I have, especially if you have roommates, uh, what we do is we kind of have the living room as just an area where we can all hang out if we're not on calls. And then we would break out into our bedrooms anytime we have um, any video chats, any video calls. So that line has been set between like me and my roommates, um, especially since some of us have more calls than others while we love our living room area because it has the natural light. It's such a productive space. And if we wanted to go in and talk to each other, we will, but most of the time we'll just sit there, like be productive and like just check in and maybe we'll have lunch together as our break. And then we'll just go back to doing our work. I think definitely, you know, setting boundaries with any like roommates or your parents is a really great advice. Nick did hit the nail on the head with making sure people know your schedule. I understand that sometimes maybe being in your parents' home might be a little bit hard, 
to like not like socialize with them but you know they're gonna understand too especially if you have work to do and they also um i know for me i'm a big natural light person unfortunately my bedroom does not have a natural like light situation so i actually bought a light off of amazon which really helps with creating more natural light in your room i only have white lights in my room so it looks like it's nice and sunny out it's actually raining outside right now <laughs> And it's really dark, but it doesn't look like that way. Um, the lights are really cheap. They're like $15. And it really helps with video calls. So you always have good video call lighting. Um, I found that very useful for me. Additionally, I also like to use for time management and just making sure to-do lists are done. I use Trello, which mm -hmm. is can be integrated with Slack. Um, but basically, it's a way that you can either hold yourself accountable or others accountable, especially with group projects. Um, the way Trello works is that you can either assign it to yourself or assign it to other people, and you can check off um, the tasks that you've done, upload any media files. It's a free resource to use. Um, you, up to like I think five to ten people so definitely I would recommend in like chapter settings especially if you have eboards or committees to try you know utilizing different um, apps and mediums to see what works best for you and this can be something you can continue on when we're not virtual so definitely I think for me the way I kind of work from home is thinking about what keeps me productive and as well as continuing it on, you know, without having calls all the time. I think another important thing is taking breaks from screen. I'm a big screen break person. So, you know, after a bunch of calls, I like to step away and, you know, it can be something as simple as just like sitting and just like not doing anything and just listening to music or just like looking outside for a little bit, making yourself a dinner. Um, always remind yourself to keep yourself hydrated. I know it can be <laughs> Sometimes getting on video calls all the time, you just forget to drink water. Definitely drink water, keep yourself hydrated, and take care of yourself. Um, definitely, if you're feeling like you're not accomplishing a lot in one day, that's okay. Nick did hit the nail on the head of that, on that comment as well, too. Um, not everything in your to-do list will get crossed off, and that's just because you're trying to figure out how long it takes you to do things. And if you have a large to-do list, make sure it's feasible. And, you know, make sure you can be flexible and say, hey, this task didn't get done today. I'm going to move it over tomorrow and complete it um, then and maybe even set aside time for that specifically and, you know, try to get those things done. And that way you'll feel more accomplished and not feel so bad that you didn't really get parts of it or all of it done in one day. Definitely. I agree. And Nick, I liked your thing about, you know, having something on your desk. I brought... <laughs> So of course, when we left our the, the office, each of our offices, we were told, you know, brought all the essentials. And my essentials include my Dobby Pop <laughs> Pop oh, gear, my. and I have a Forky Mr. Potato Head. So <laughs> you know, I had to bring a little bit of me, and it makes me happy, you know, just to kind of look down, and it feels a little bit more normal. So. Right. I I did. I actually have a mug from um, I was in Disney uh, back in the fall. And it, it's from Beauty and the Beast. It has, um, I want adventures in the great wide somewhere. And I'm like, hmm, when I look at it, I'm thinking maybe someday we'll get back outside, go on some cool trips, have yeah. some cool adventures. So That's yeah. great. Well, I just want to thank you again, Nick, for mm -hmm. doing this for us today and for all of our mm -hmm. attendees. And also check back next week, same time, same place. Nick will be here again, leading another awesome webinar for us. We're going to be doing a next year webinar, hitting the ground running, planning for next year because that, you know, next year's still going to, next semester is still going to be happening. Whether or not, you know, we're online or we're back on campuses, back in the normal world, but we need to start planning now. So Nick's going to be back to lead that awesome webinar next Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern time. So looking forward to seeing you all back here again. Yes, indeed. Awesome. Well, thanks everybody for joining. We will see you soon and lead on. <laughs>